It's Mark from Haunted Auckland and Paranormal New Zealand. Uh, welcome to another episode of Outside the Box. Today we're going to be talking to a great team over in the UK from uh, Retford, and they are Retford Ghost Hunters. So welcome, guys. I got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. Perfect. We're all perfect. We're all good. Stay there. Brilliant. Brilliant. Don't, don't touch Don't anything. move anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Let's get this started. Are we all sorted? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Welcome, guys. Good to finally meet you. Hi. Uh, I'll, I'll edit out all Not this uh, muck up trying to get started. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been following you guys for a little bit now and um, checking out your page and all that. Looks like you've been doing some great stuff over there, over in the UK and Redford. So um, can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourselves? Um, just the basics, you know, how you got started, how you got together, and all that. How you, how you, how you got into all this okay. paranormal stuff? Okay. First, Rachel. Do you want me to start? Yeah, yeah might as well. Um, well, I've been been doing a bit of ghost hunting for about ten or fifteen years on and off. What I thought were ghost hunting, but when I when I think now, it was we were just going around fields and churches shouting, "Is anybody there?" With a camera, good old fashioned proper old fashioned ghost hunting never even heard of an emf emf meter or anything um then i i ended up working in a manor house um and started to experience my first lot of paranormal activity which absolutely blew my mind um and i've been, I've been brought up very religious very religious family so there was all you know saying oh you know you need to be careful and this is demonic and you need to do this that, and other and i thought hang on i've got my own mind here I'm, I'm intrigued. So um, started to do ghost hunting with the owner of the house, which went quite big. We was on Most Haunted and did a few other things. Um, and then left it alone for quite a while. Joined the team. I thought it was absolutely horrendous because every time a speck of dust come past, they were like, oh, it's an orb. And I'm like, it's not. <laughs> I can I'm relate. Right now. Yeah, so I, I started to, yeah yeah and you know it's so draining and then um so i started to like do a bit of research into paranormal myself um and then my my partner said to me why don't you start your own team up so i said oh i might think about it this is at eight o'clock in the morning when he come back at five o'clock for tea i said sit down i got something to tell you he says what's up i said i've got a team he went, what do you mean you've got a team i goes paranormal team I've got an historian, I've got a medium, I've got paranormal investigation. He went, I've only been to work for eight hours. <laughs> and I just said, where's your credit cards? And that were it. That were beginning. Yep. So it's, it's went and bought the hobby. basics. <laughs> oh my God, don't even go there. But um, absolutely from day one, me, me, my approach to what I wanted to do, I wanted to be different than most paranormal teams. Um, I didn't want to use Ouija boards or seances. I wanted to be stay scientific um, and to use as much equipment as we can and also our own senses. Um, so the people that I've gathered, the people that have been drawn to me in my team are all on the same wavelength. We're very jolly, very happy, very uh, approachable and very respectful. And I think that's important. And the stuff we've got from well we've been going a year this month and i can honestly say to you that every single ghost hunt we do we come out with something magnificent good so wow. nice. that's it cool it's good good well, i'll be coming guys. i'll be coming over next year uh once this whole lockdown rubbish is finished yep. and uh, uh that'll oh, be, that'll be brilliant i'll be putting you guys on the map and uh oh, on my, on my uh, list list to stop yeah. off you guys so, so sort out a place that you can take me That'd to, be okay? Because awesome. uh, I like to hang out with uh, other team members. Oh God! Over there. Well, um, <laughs> we've got. Um, a few. Hey, other guys. What about you guys? Yeah. Who's going next? Who's going next? Who wants to go next? Peter, you go next. I'll go next. I'll go next. 
Yeah, okay, my name's Peter Humphrey. Uh, I'm from just outside of Retford. Um, I'm now a hypnotherapist, psychotherapist, <coughs> but was but was a, a, a pub owner and a restaurant owner where I had lots of presents in, in an old pub that I had. Um, and I've always been quite, um, as if I could feel things and smell things. Um, uh, reputedly, my, grand, my great grandfather follows me around smoking cigarettes wherever I go. Uh, I joined uh, Rachel and the team as a VIP, uh, and then because uh, I'm a, I was a massive skeptic, uh, and then I went again and I, I did another VIP, and then Rachel said, uh, "Do you want to go on another one?" I said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll pay again." But she, I said, "It's my birthday, but I'm still going to come because I want to come." And she said, "Well, I'll give you this one for nothing," uh, and then she said, "You might as well just join because you just keep coming and paying all the time." <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I, I went as a I went as a massive skeptic, uh, really, to, because I I had, had all these feelings and everything. Uh, I'd been directed by a spirit to buy this pub, who was an old friend of my dad's. This is what a medium told me. Um, so I went as a skeptic, uh, and now my skepticism is dwindling very very fast. I now go as m much as I can, as many times as I can just to get my ultimate goal of seeing a presence, a spirit, or whatever they are. Quite um, personal from the Yeah, I, I, I've, I've witnessed mist and everything. When I've been filming, it's gone past the camera. I can't see it with my own eyes. Uh, but that's what I want to do now. So that's me. That's my little thing into ghost hunting. I'm enjoying every minute of it now. I know, it's a great yeah, film to title. A good member. Yeah. Mm. Mark, Will, what about you guys? Shall I go next? Uh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Uh, well, I'll go next. You join last. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Will's our new member. <laughs> he's, the newest, he's the newest mm. member. Um, yeah, I'm Mark, obviously you know my name. Um, I live just outside of Ret uh, Retford as well, a miles. Um, I joined was last September October mm -hmm. and uh through a friend of mine who was was part was also a, a team member um Lucy um I was skeptical when I started I, I kind of believed because uh, over the years growing up and some of the house I've lived in I've experienced some very very strange and weird things and I just kind of wanted the uh, 100% proof evidence that it was actually either ghosts, spirits, etc., or whether it was explainable and it wasn't a real thing. Um, and like I say, well, I was I was skeptical, but after seeing some of the things I've seen, I've seen a couple of solid spirits, um, and I've been, like like Pete said, the mists in the on camera and stuff. I've seen quite a lot of things, and I, I pretty much believe 100% pretty much now. So. Uh, so yeah, uh, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed my time there, and you know we've got a lot more to come yet. And every event we do, I enjoy that a little bit more. Um, I get more, more feelings that I get grow every time I get a, get to a different place, go to a different event. Um, I can feel more, I can sense more. My senses are had more heightened. When I first started, I didn't really feel anything. I was just like, oh, you know, everyone was saying, oh, there's something here, I can feel something, you know, I feel hot, cold, I feel a presence, but I didn't feel that at first. And now, the more I do it, the more it grows, the more I feel it. So, so yeah, um, I've, I've experienced some pretty impressive things uh, during my time as a Redford Ghost Center. And I'm really, I'm really get, I really get excited about some places we go to. Um, so, yeah. Well, you're very lucky that thing. you're living in, the place that you're in, living in, yeah, and the, over the UK, there's just so much history. Yeah, you're so lucky over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of history, Especially where we of, are. Uh, yeah, exactly where we are. There's a lot of, a lot of old places. A lot of uh, well, Britain, isn't it? It's a very old. It's got, it's got a lot, a lot of history. It's We're rarely short of than... locations. <laughs> we are very, very rarely short locations. It's just trying to find places we can get into. Um, but yeah, we're never short of anywhere to go to. Yeah, I can imagine. Wow. Will, how about you, man? All right, so I'm Will. 
I'm from Nottinghamshire, but I'm from a different town. I'm from Mansfield. I've only been in Redford for a couple of years. And I'm very, very new to the team. Today is my week anniversary of joining the team, actually. Oh, Yay. welcome. Yay. Yeah, I, I was invited Congratulations, for the VIP. Yay! <laughs> I was invited for the VIP last Monday, and then Rachel invited me to the team on Tuesday. She said Can I just clicked. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've always been quite confident. I do a lot of TV work anyway. I don't know if over there you've heard of the show Peaky Blinders. Yes, I've heard of it, yeah. Uh, I do, I play a Peaky Gang member on that show, so oh. it's not a talking role or anything like that, but I just work with the tea, I work with the cast and I just look pretty in the in the background. He works with some holidays. Or, oh. or not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not pretty most times, Pete. Uh, but same as Mark, I've always been a bit sceptical and I've never actually thought about ghost hunting really but then when we went into lockdown I live on my own and I was literally not seeing anyone and all of a sudden I came across Redford ghost hunters and then every other night I was literally watching them live and it was just some nice company for me really and then mm. I feel like I feel like I've known the team a lot longer than a week because I was watching them in my living room every other night <laughs> which yeah. sounds a bit odd <laughs> Stalker. It sounds like you've got a great mix of people there. Yeah. It just sounds like a perfect yeah. mix of people. We it have really a massive mix. All, all individuals, all different. They all bring something different to the team, and it's it's pretty amazing. Mm. Massive. We've got people come and go, um, but yeah, I think the people we've got at the minute we gel really well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Actually, Nottingham. Sure, that's um, that's by Edwin Stowe. Anywhere? Edwin Stowe's yeah. round. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I've got this doll. Yeah, I've got this doll here. This one here. This is this doll here. Oh. Okay. I called her, I called her Edwina because um, she came from Edwina Stowe. Oh, wow. Really? She's a haunted doll. Oh, I like Edwina. She's a haunted doll. She was given to me um, by my um, family um, over there when we were passing through. We went to um, Nottingham Forest and uh, Sherwood Forest, Sherwood Forest oh, and all that. Wow. And all that. We passed through Edwin Stowe. Oh, we go to the I'm actually inside of Sherwood Forest right now. Oh, yeah? Oh, amazing place. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. She came from there. She came from Edwin's Day, which is just out of there, isn't it? Wow. Wow. Flipping heck. Cool. I've, been looking, I've been looking after her. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> so you say you stay with this doll. What, what, what does it do with the haunted doll? What, what do you get from it? Oh, I get nothing from it. Nothing stripped from it. She hasn't done anything for me, but um, she was passed on to me. Um, just uh, she belonged to a little girl that died of cancer. She had cancer. Um, I think she was right. about 10 years old or something many years ago. And her family had this custom made for her. Um, because the girl didn't have any hair, they made this doll. Well, I'm trying to be respectful of this thing. Right. Um, they had this custom made for her so she could have a doll with no hair. And uh, they also right. have some wigs. There's some little wigs that go on top of her as well. So she comes with oh, wigs. And um, she's got little boots and all the works, you know. Um, yeah, and the, the the girl passed away, and the parents just sort of um, stored it away, and then they, uh, I ended up with her. Wow! I've got her little wigs and everything as well, so it's they cool. That. <laughs> That's crazy. Somehow in this, but in this in this room, I've got lots of um, haunted objects. Apparently, people give me these little artifacts. Yeah, so it's my little sort of research room. Um, yeah. So what about yourself, Mark? What about me? What about me? Um, yeah, tell us, tell us a bit about you as well. Oh, it's not really about me, this one, is it, really? But, um... Well, well, just, just, to know, okay, just to know who we're talking to. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, well, I'm, I'm Mark from New Zealand. Um, I've been right. doing... I'm 52 years old. I've been doing this since I was 10. Wow. Uh, I started my first paranormal team back in 1985. Um, there was three of us. Wow. And we sort of, uh, I think we were sort of New Zealand's possibly possibly first sort of paranormal researched um, ghost hunting team. But we were only young, we were just young, ad young adults at the time, teenagers. Mm -hmm. And um, we sort of walked around with torches and a little snappy camera with those little cubes. You have the cube cameras with the cube flash. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, we did, we did sort of paranormal, and then I sort of did that for about three or four years. And then I went solo for many, many years. 
for a couple of decades or so. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, 2010, I started pulling a team together because I thought it'd be nice to uh, get back into a team. So I've had mm. my team since 2010, oh, and we've been doing Haunted Orphan ever since. Members come and members wow. go, and uh, but we still have our. They do. They do. We have our core team member, yeah, and we've got a really good team yeah, of dedicated alive. people. Sorry. That's impressive. Mm. Do you stream so you live live like us? I've been alive, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, trust your man. Thanks, man. Thirty-five <laughs> years, I'm thirty-six, so I'm That's a long time. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm still looking for answers. I've still got so many questions, though. You know, you'll never find all the answers in this field. Oh, God, yeah. I don't think we'll ever find the actual answer, though, do you? I just think it's interesting trying to find it. I think we all find... (laughs) Each little team that's out there doing this, we all find our little bits and pieces. We all have little experiences. I mean, little bits of evidence that we will pick up along the way. But I don't think the answers will actually come, you know, worldwide as a worldwide thing. It'll be an individual thing. Mm. It'll be a personal... Yeah, you're right. I think if you've got the answers, you know, you know what's out there, the truth, it goes for your one hundred percent evidence. The whole world to believe it, it'll become pretty boring. Yeah, we need yeah. that little bit of, uh, you know, is mm. it real? Is it? Not? Why is it just pretty yeah. boring? I think it's the mystery. It's the yeah. word as well. It's the mystery. Yeah. 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 It's that, that's what the excitement of the unknown, I guess. Yeah. 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 Um, and ah. the thing is as well we get very excited you know we only have to you know we're clicking a fart and we're jumping about literally but with the equipment we get and and especially when it's um, confirmed with another piece of equipment like if we have the SLS camera and our medium has actually said you need to point that camera over there because there's a man there and we point well Pete's the SLS man points that camera and there it is the stick figures there straight away and then the EMF meter is going off it's just like then flashy balls will go off you're like wow you know and we just get so excited it's great yeah. love it yeah uh, it can be a real rally really, um... oh and god uh, yeah so what, what's what's the most um what, what places can you recommend like what what area what locations have you been in that um you've had the most amount of activity right. if i'm going over there i want activity well I can honestly say it, it's quite strange. I've not been very well, so my team went on the for the first time that I sent them out on their own last night, and they did me proud. Honestly, they were brilliant. Thank you. Um, and and we, we've <laughs> we've got um, local to us. We've got an old an old mine, um, the pit, um, but it's derelict, and it's it. The, the well, they've been saying they're going to knock it down for I don't know how long, but that place is unbelievable but i think a lot of paranormal teams have gone in and done a lot of stuff in there and i believe that whatever's there now isn't just the original people that died there does a live feed last night yes yeah i watched some of it it. yeah yeah i mean did you see winding gear come out on the alice box that were like whoa (laughs) Fantastic! Just so of, much last night. Going, yeah. Yeah. Did, did yeah, you that enjoy place, it, Mark? I did. I didn't watch it for too long. I will admit that I was sort of busy doing other things, but I sort of looked, watched it for a little bit. Um, but I do, I do like to watch mm. other people's live feeds and other people's videos and and, and footage because um, I mean that's how you learn from other people. You just watch how they're doing it. Yeah. And that's how I've picked up a lot. And I just like to see what other people are doing around the world. So whenever I see a live feed going, I always yeah. tune in for a little bit. Maybe not the whole thing, but you know, I tune in for a watch yeah, what guys are doing and check out what the, the location. Yeah. Mm. And I yeah. love their electric and abandoned um, places too. So. Oh, well, we've got um, Laura. We've got Laura on our team. We call her Laura the Explorer, and she's in Twerbex. Um So she's been an absolute asset. Um, I put an advert out that I wanted an urban explorer on my team so we could get that opportunity because I ain't got a clue where to start um, and she's given us so much aren't she guys she's yeah, been very brilliant good. Yes. so it's opened us, us up into the derelict you know doing more derelict stuff because we used to do basically we used to just do pubs we used to go into pubs and because there's that much history in pubs you know and accessible history that you can val- you know validate it mm. but now we're um, veering out a little bit aren't we <laughs> yeah we're getting brave 
The, so the urban that? exploring over here, Mark, I don't know if it's the same over in New Zealand, but the urban exploring over here is uh, is very tight shop. They uh, they won't tell each other of uh, locations and things like that. You've got to you've got to bargain it with something else or invite yeah, them on a go to the things. Yeah, I don't know to get the, the information yeah. where to go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Explorers over here as well, and they don't share unless you become mm. friends with them, and you give them some locations, and they'll give yeah. you some. Um, which I think yeah. is fair enough. Yeah, I mean, gotta build, not, gotta build trust. Yeah, it's 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 not good to put locations out there randomly. No. So many places have been burned no. down, and you know. Trash. Yeah, they get trashed, and it kind of ruins it as well. It, it makes mm -hmm. it dangerous. It ruins it. So when we go and investigate, it, it might it might not be as safe as it once was to be walking around in it. Just a minute, it's oh, it's gonna. Sorry, excuse that peeping for a minute. My light went out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah we've, we've got lots of good places um doing all right we've got lots coming up i've been to sheffield today to look at um three places and it was an absolute fail every single place i went to was was locked up and couldn't get in so we always try and go and research it test the signal for live um see if we can get in see if it's all right try and get permission um today was an absolute fail but you move on don't you yeah learn some you it's good so let me see um so what do you feel is the most um demanding aspect of this field time <laughs> for me definitely um it's time time is time is a big thing mm. I think we we all struggle to get on it together. It's just one good thing about having so many members in a group. If some people some people can't get on one event, you've always got someone else to go on it or investigate. You've always got someone else to go and investigate. Uh, you know, so if it was only say five of us and we're all working, it might be one person investigating. So yeah, it, it is time. Time's a big time's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Trying yeah. to fit in with everybody's schedules and. I think most of us work, don't we? But I've gone part time to do it <laughs> to do it more yeah i love it but yeah i think that's the most demanding thing really i think i think probably getting locations and and just having time the rest it just all flows just comes natural no um, easy you'd enjoy a hunt with us you would we uh, we, we would. seem to be branching out a lot more now mark we're uh, we're, we're... We used to travel just half an hour to venues and things like that, pubs and locally and things like that. But now we're, we've been known to go two and a half hours drive away uh, and we're not getting home till, you know, three o'clock in the morning sometimes. Yeah. But um, the, the, the team do commit when they can. And, uh, and we, we always have a good hunt and everything like that. And sometimes we make a day of it. We go out a bit earlier and have fish and chips at the coast or something like that. Uh, and then we go hunting yeah. at night time. So, yeah, we've it, got it is. Sorry. Go on. Uh, time's a big thing, um, but for me personally, it's um, it's the day after when uh, the commitment of being drained and everything like that in the profession that I'm in, I've got to start talking to people then. And if you get in at three o'clock in the morning and you've been drained by all the spirits you've been round and everything like that, you're absolutely knackered. So uh, it's it's the draining for me that's uh, the biggest commitment. I'm late to have the paranormal hangover. Yeah. Yeah, have you heard of that, Mark? The paranormal hangover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely get that. And then there's the hangover, yeah. uh, the paranormal uh, withdrawals as well during lockdown. Oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Well, we we kept it going. We yeah. did keep it going. Um, what we did is we did talks and we did quizzes. Um, we made sure that we went live twice a week. And then I did, um, me and my partner, we did my back garden because I live in a farm. <laughs> and I did the wood at the back of my farm. Were you looking and for the theories? canal at the side of the farm. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and he's not really in. He's not. Well, I would say he's not into it. He enjoys it, but he's not. He's not particularly on the team. But he really helped me keep it going. Um, and then as soon as we could like start gathering, that were it. We were out there, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Good. Very good. 
No, so yeah, just to keep the viewers, you know. But actually, we gained viewers on the lockdown. We actually gained them because everyone was at home. Everyone was bored, bored. At, at home. Yeah, <laughs> looking for things. Yeah. yeah. So it, I started doing this. It, it did us a favour. Yeah, I started doing yeah, that video yeah. chats <laughs> because it was a way that well, I could keep in touch with other other teams yeah. and network, keep networking yeah. with other people. But I could also have content yeah. for our audience as well. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, it's nice actually to be involved in, you know, in something like this. Mm. Um, we found that we're in the media a lot. We've in our local paper, we're in the national papers. Um, we got approached yesterday by Really TV. Have you seen Really TV? You know the it, over here. It's the one that Ghost Adventures is on and stuff, okay. and they're wanting to do something with us as well. So. It's all exciting. Well, I'm getting messed up now. Yeah, I love our You're not going to get possessed every Mind episode. Mind you, I like Alan better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about <laughs> the way the TV media portrays the, uh, the paranormal then? Um, do you think it's a hindrance or do you think it's a help? Or, you know, I, I think that, hunting in general. That they, dem <laughs> they, they, demand, uh, they, they demand detection. Uh, which mm. sometimes uh, gets teams to probably falsify things or whatever. Maybe but, so. Uh, I think I think I think if they if they if they're paying money for people to do it, they want something to happen. Um, but I, I will. Uh, Rachel will probably stick up for me when I say this. We've we've already sat down at team meetings that if we was ever approached to falsify anything, we wouldn't do it. We'd just carry on I as we are. Yeah, the, I'll give it up. <laughs> what? There's no, there's no aim. There's no goal. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fake anything, I just feel that you, there's just no point. You might as well just go and work on shop in a shop or something. It, it's now it, we do it with to TV, get the answer. With TV, it's all for entertainment. It's mainly for entertainment and real ghost and to real paranormal investigating. You could be sat for hours and get absolutely nothing. And if you had that on TV, viewers would be bored and viewer rating would drop. So obviously they've got to make it more entertaining by, did you hear that? What was that? Chuck a few things maybe, make a few knocks mm. themselves. It's just yeah. to keep people entertained. And if otherwise they wouldn't have the shows. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not gonna name any shows, but all these shows on TV, they wouldn't be on TV. Because yeah. they would just well, be boring. You... It can be quite, I wouldn't say I don't find it boring, sat there for hours listening. But for someone watching, it could be quite, quite boring, and they're just going to turn off and go and do something else. So, yeah. I think nine, sure nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. But you know, well, I think when when you do get real evidence, it's well, I don't know. It's it's more like well, I think you just know. You know by you definitely know by our reaction anyway when we've got somewhere, don't you? And if you were faking it, if you were faking it, it's only so long before you would actually get caught out anyway. So, yeah, yeah, I've seen oh God, if I found anybody on TV being caught out many times. Mm. Mm. But I think it does go. I think it does. It lately, as especially um, on Sky and stuff, the paranormal channels and that, it, it has made people a bit more interested, which helps us. You know, especially because you're local to people and what have you, and they're all, it's, I'll be honest, it's crazy. We're like little mini celebrities where we come from. I can't go to Subway. I can't. Unless somebody's screaming like a cancer. Ooh. I wake up <laughs> to like 10, 10 Facebook requests a day. You're just like, what's, what, what's happening? <laughs> 17, <laughs> uh, 17 a day. Wow. All married women. All married women. Uh, <laughs> here we are. We've got a little ghost dog here. Look. Celebrities. It's crazy. I've been asked my autograph twice. People wow. approach me that yeah. I'm a bus driver, so I get about a bit. And I'll go to yeah. Nottingham City Centre and there's people you rip for ghosts at me. Yeah. I can't stop though. I've got a timetable to keep to, but yeah, I've had it a few times. Oh, it's crazy. That's so nice. it's nice. Well, guys, yeah. Yeah. Guys, what you do, I suppose, you know? You want Mark? It's it's nice to be recognised and, and, and acknowledged for what you do, but 
I don't think I'd like to. What you do, definitely. I wouldn't like to. Mark, do you you have, uh, Mark, do you have a TV program out in New Zealand? No, we had one about in the 90s. We had one called, um, what was it called? Ghost Hunting or something or some. It was only about six episodes that came out, and that's about all we've had. But we're actually working on one at the moment. Uh, we're just trying to get funding. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. We're just trying get to get something for that. But it's very—it's going to be. We've had lots of offers to um, do TV shows, but we've turned them all down mainly because we have no say about how we're portrayed, and we have no say yeah. about how we come across. And um, yeah, we certainly yeah. don't want to come out yeah. looking like flakes. So, well, that's it. That's what we. Yeah. That's what we've said as a team. You know, we've had a meeting and said, you know, if we get a TV deal or anything like that, and and they just want us to be a puppet on a string for them, mm-hmm. then it's not good for us. You know, yeah. it's got to be real. I mean, Joe. Yeah. Well, the best thing, the best thing is the fact that we go live, um, and we so everything that's done, everything we do is seen, mm-hmm. and our viewers are crucial to us because. It's always the viewers that get our screenshots because obviously they're seeing through the eye of a lens, which picks up paranormal, doesn't it? Um, the camera and what have you. So the screenshots we get and we're like, we were stood next to that. Wow, it blows us away. And I don't want to lose that. I, I think without the viewers and the screenshots, it makes me wonder how successful we would be. Do you get me? I also- think. If we ever did get a TV show, I think we'd still go live on Facebook and do our own little thing as well. <laughs> unless yeah, unless it was stated in the terms that we couldn't do that, and then I don't know if we would. But yeah, yeah. we'd carry on. <laughs> we need the viewers. We need our viewers. Because um, sometimes we'll do an investigation and we'll think we've not got anything or next to nothing, and then we'll get viewers send us pitches in and we'll realise we've got more than what we thought. So they um, they are basically what they they get a lot of evidence for screenshotting. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we're feeling the same actually. We've done live feed, the odd live feed during a, an investigation, and um, somebody in the uh, that's, that's watching will go, "Hey, that ball moved," and, and we won't see it, and they'll yeah. say, "I'm yeah. sure that ball moved," you know, and then we sort of we'll go back and we'll check the footage, and yeah. it does sort of move, and then we've mm-hmm. done things where we've um, sped it up and slowed it down and, and put it through filters, and you can see the ball turning and moving. And it's it's something that we wouldn't mm. have seen at the time, and uh, yeah, somebody else that's watching the, the camera saw it move and yeah. they highlighted it, or else we would have missed it completely. We had a ball move yeah. in the church the other day. It's yeah. fantastic. We was actually filming it and just watching it, shouting out to it, and it was um, it was just moving. It was fantastic and flashing and everything. Cool. Just a cat toy, but yeah. wow. One of our flashy balls. Or flashy balls, yeah. A bit of a fad at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they're fantastic. <laughs> Love them. You have flashy balls in your team. Flashy balls. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't have flashy balls in our team, but um, I'll show you what we have. We have got a ball, though. Hang on, I'll just get them. All right. Where is he? There he is. This guy's been with us since day one. This is Mr. Smiley. All right. Oh, look at it. Cool. That's good. And he's well, I've deflated him a little bit, so he's a little bit soft. So you can see he's quite soft. He's not like oh, a yeah. or, or he doesn't roll very easily. So if he's on a step, you can squash him right. on his head. He won't randomly roll. He has to be pushed. Yeah. And he's yeah. been on hundreds of investigations. Oh, no. And he's possibly seen more than we have and experienced more than we have. Mm-hmm. We've had him on stairs <laughs> and um we have, we have him on stairs and we have him on corridors and stairwells and all that kind of thing and, GoPro. Um, we always have cameras aimed at them so he's a bit of a celebrity a bit of a, he's probably bigger a bigger celebrity than we oh. are it's <laughs> yeah oh that's brilliant isn't he's been, it he's been with us for about nearly 10 years so oh bless wow. him <laughs> got a nice smile <laughs> <Just a hospital. laughs> we need to get some t-shirts made with Mr. Smiley on it now so. yeah you ought to do <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, Fantastic. So, have you? So, have you actually captured anything that you know worthy that you, or you think, what, something that you think is worthy at the moment yet, or have you captured any evidence yeah. that you like? Or for oh, me, <laughs> for me, we've caught loads. But we we was at a place called the uh, the last lost chapel of Orton in Nottinghamshire. Uh, it took us four hours to find it. Uh, and then we went we, we went there and then we went back and did an investigation and um, Rachel was going to do an EVP 
And oh, yeah. as she said, right, everybody be quiet. And one of the group heard this voice say, you be quiet. He, he automatically was on live. He automatically said it to Mark. Did you say you be quiet? Mark was stood next to me. I was sat down with the SLS and Mark, I never heard Mark speak or anything. And we captured it on the, on the EVP, you be quiet. And it is so demonic, the voice, it was unbelievable. That's and then thing. another group, Amazing. another group went, at, was it after us, Rachel? After yeah, us, about Rachel. a week after. They went a week after and the same voice said to them, leave now. Fantastic capture. Is that on your website? Yeah. 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 So we can find it yeah, on your website? Yeah, yeah. So I'll direct, video, people, I'll direct people to your website and they can check it out. That's and then also... Rachel, Rachel. Go well, on, you tell well, them about the airman, Rachel. All right, then, can I? Yeah, go on. <laughs> we, we've just got into our local paper um, for Gamston Airport, local airport to us, just, you know, like, like flying and stuff. And um, so we went quite open-minded and we were just walking along the front of the hangars um actually thinking this is a bit boring i hope the viewers are all right and i got the paratech have you heard of the paratech have you not oh no. is it a gadget Ooh, paratech's brilliant yes oh yeah. it's brilliant yeah. awesome. word a word bank and um mm. so i was no, saying is there a is there a pilot here is there an airman here now a lot of people started to scroll up and we were reading did somebody say yes ma'am so we were like anyway when we when we played it back you you clearly hear yes ma'am like that like a, an american canadian accent we later found out that from gamston airport a wellington bomber set off and it crashed with canadian airmen in it on that site and we didn't know and we we literally do feel we've got some residual voice maybe i don't know but it was definitely a disembodied yes ma'am fantastic so nice. that's going around at the moment isn't it but as for screenshots and stuff like that we, we we've just got the bride haven't we from the church yeah um the, bride. the alice box come up with um yeah alice box come up with um will you marry me and as, as that was said, some people cap well, Mark, you saw, didn't you, a white figure? Um and it was yeah. screenshotted and it's yeah, just amazing. Well it's just, full, yeah. it's just a full wall. figure. Just a full, full I saw figure. it walk past the door on the outside of the door. So it was outside the church. So I sprinted over there to check it out. I jumped because I put a sensor in the door, so I jumped over the sensor, got outside, there's nothing there. Um, but about 15 seconds after I've gone outside, yeah. the sensor went off. It's not on a timer, it goes off as soon as you walk past it. So I, while I'm outside, nobody else is inside, something's walked past it. Exactly the same spot I saw the figure. And yeah. we've got screenshots of it as well. So, and the, yeah. Um, how inside yeah. The Alice box also did say bride that night. So it said, will you marry me? And it said bride. And we caught the bride. Mm. Beautiful picture, wow. beautiful nice. capture. Awesome. And that's on your website too. Cool. Yeah, everything's on there. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be going back and checking. Yeah, also, on the, also on the is, website, um, Mark is the uh, is the monk from uh, Grantham. Oh wow! Captured. Yeah, that's a great capture. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, uh, a woman from the same town um, got got the footage of it and depicted that it was her father, which we always, our, our, our records, our live, said that we captured the monk, uh, and she put it in a couple of papers as it was her father. But um, we, we still claim it, it's still ours. But, but that's on our site as well. Well, she didn't Absolutely give you any acknowledgement. Brilliant face, it is, is such a handsome, handsome man. It, it's, he's got the most beautiful face, honestly, and his hood up, and um, you can see his eyes, his nose, his beard. It's absolutely stunning. It, it's it's a beautiful ghost. It really is. Pleasure That's to own that picture. It's unreal, unreal. Wow. I'll send it you later. Yeah, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, send me the best home resolution and I'll, I'll add them onto this video. Yeah, yeah well, brilliant. The best okay. piece of acting we've got is, yeah. um, is in the Elms Hotel in Redford. Uh, we've got yeah. a picture of a little girl. <laughs> this little girl, she's as solid as any any human person. And she stood behind one of our team members. I, I believe it's Rachel she stood behind, because I think it looks like Rachel. Um, but yeah, um, it, there was no kids in the hotel. It was only us, the team, and uh, the owner and another member of staff, uh, as far as I know. There was no, ki there was no kids in the hotel. No, um, no. We've been told, told people have seen a little girl in the hotel, the spirit of a little girl. And we've got we a found picture that out of that. After. One of the best ones we've got, I think. Yeah, that's good, that. Solid, it's amazing. It's, um, it's just done on the um, it amazes me every time I look at it. Wow, not the infrared cam, yeah. Was it is it the infra, infrared camera? What do you call it? That one that shows uh, up uh, red, yeah. No, it's big from violet, violet, full spectrum, full, full spectrum. spectrum, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where one of them it is pretty, mm. it's, it's amazing. It is me every time I'll I send see you it. that as well. I'll send you a few of our stuff. I'll send you the bride, mm. it's brilliant. We also did a, a, a private one, me, Rachel, and uh, our media, Mandy. Um, we went to a, a friend of mine's uh, uh, gamekeeper's cottage in the middle of um, a park. We can't tell you where it is because it was a private one. But we detected a young girl. Uh, Mandy, with the medium, was sat, said that the young girl was sat by the side of her. Me and Rachel was across the bed. And we picked the, uh, the uh, on the SLS, we picked the figure up. And Mandy was talking to this young girl and she was telling us all the story about how she drowned in the river and everything like that. And there was a river outside and Mandy didn't even know that because we turned up in the darkness. We never tell our medium where we're going. So we got that, we got it on SLS and then a screenshot from a, from a, a viewer. So you see the little girl sat in the chair next to Mandy. Three, three, a three way uh, proof that we got it. Mm. Fantastic. And if when you do come, Mark, I'll have a word with my friend and see if maybe you, me and Rachel and, and Mandy can go and visit there. Yeah. And that, that place was absolutely full of orbs, everything. We detected everything. Women, children, orbs all over everything. It was unbelievable. Mm. It's a day. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're just waiting. I mean, basically, we're, we're starting to plan our road trip. We usually we start off in London, then we sort of drive all the way up and ended up in like we end, we usually aim for Scotland because we love Scotland, absolutely love Scotland. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, we start at the bottom and make our way up to Scotland. And um, a couple of years ago, we went over across to uh, Ireland and all that. But um, yeah, we sort of go up. We, we want to travel more around Scotland. We're looking at all these places in between that we could stop off at for a night or two, and. Um, how many how many team do you bring over with you mark oh just myself and my wife it's just um it's just a holiday we come over for a holiday yeah that 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 that, that would be accommodating i mean you could come and stop if you got go around this area you don't have to get an hotel you could stop at my house oh my wife would like a hotel so right okay um, she, so right. she stays in the hotel um doing lady things and i go off and do my ghost hunting so it works out quite well right oh. right yeah. Well, round where we are, Mark, we have the uh, the old Roman road, the original Roman road from uh, Scotland to London. Yes, that's right. Uh, so we we have lots of places along there that are, are old inns and coach houses and things like that yeah. from a bit further on. So yeah, we have lots of lots, lots of history. There are, there are so many places you can investigate in the UK. It's just amazing. I know. It's one of my favourite places you should check out. We're going there this week. Is uh, East Drive? I've been there. Yes. I've been there, yeah. Oh, have you been? I stayed a night in the East Drive. Yep. Amazing. On your it? own? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what did <laughs> you think? On your own? Yeah. What did you think wow. of the place? Did you find it scary or were you comfortable? Wow. I, 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 well, I found it very peaceful. It's very peaceful. I did. I walked in. I found it very peaceful, relaxing, and homely. Yeah. And I could have stayed there. I, I could move in. I, yeah, I think experience. it depends who you are. It depends who you are. I feel the minute I go in there, I'm going to get thrown about. The thing is, though, the trick is the trick is to talk to the next door neighbour because she'll tell you everything oh, about what she worry. knows. Don't worry. And she the next door neighbour who lives just through that wall 
told me that she enjoys Carol. when par- when she enjo- she loves it when paranormal investigators go there because she taps on the walls. She taps on the yeah. walls. You can hear their questioning because they get all excited. And yeah. a lot of a lot of that place is built around the myth of her doing these things, which is which I think is hilarious. Um, yeah. And Brilliant. she says she has a great time having fun with the paranormal investigators. Um, well, Mark, yeah, you know the uh, you know the dolls room, Mark. Yes, yes. I slept in there for two hours on my own, and all the rest of the team was downstairs investigating still. And I'll tell you now, the door opened and shut on more than six or seven occasions yeah. without me going nowhere near it. There not is. to mention the dolls arm that went up in the air. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> there is a YouTube video of the next door neighbor, the woman who lives next door. She comes in to clean. She came in one evening. And it's on YouTube and it shows you her going upstairs. She does get pretty scared in this video. She's asking the spirits to open and close the door and open and command, close and command. And she actually captures like the head of a spirit peeking around the door um, and wow. get thrown into the room in the room she's in. It's a pretty, it, obviously, I believe what the YouTube video is showing you. I believe that, I don't believe she faked it. Mm. And that is pretty impressive. It's one of the most impressive videos I've seen. So I actually it believe that that's scary. not at I don't believe any of that video on YouTube that she's putting as fake. Um, for, Mark, for, for hi, Mark. Happen, Mark, can you remember yeah. when me and you was in that little bedroom and that dog had turned around? Yeah. A little teddy, that little was while, dog that's why we were dog. in there. That's why we were actually oh, yeah. sat in there, but we didn't even notice. And then literally, when we just like looked around the room, I went, why is that dog facing the other way? And it, I said, have you touched it? He goes, well, I've been with you. And it was on camera, Ooh. weren't it? That it had changed position. What do you think about the theory? Did you actually see on the road? There's the stories about the wardrobe right. being a, a vortex or something, or a portal. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't believe that. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think it's I, I think it's a strange place because I think it's a place. Yes, it's it's got it's had activity and stuff like that, but it's so commercialised now. Um, I, I know if I were a ghost, I'd be getting pissed off. Oh, I've yeah. gone dark yeah. again. I think the spirits get bored sometimes. <laughs> they're in every night, aren't they? They're in there every single night. Ghost hunting. I know. Oh, well, guys, so I think we could be, I could have you up talking all night long about this. It sounds like, um, <laughs> we could, it sounds like yeah, we'd we get along really well. Much, so we'll have to definitely, uh, definitely hook up when I get over there. We'll definitely have to do a uh, source up, yeah. there, uh, up there. Um, Mark, or else we'll just Mark keep are you around. on uh, Facebook? Yeah. Mark. Yep. Are you on Facebook? Yep. Can we have you? Of course. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, it's been lovely. Thank you okay. very much for taking notice of us and giving ah. us time. It's we're, we're honoured. Yeah, and it, it sounds like you're not a flaky bunch, which is uh, I've come across a few flaky bunches in my time, and uh, it sounds like you're pretty grounded, <laughs> which is nice. Definitely. We're definitely we're grounded. grounded. We're we're grounded. We're great into humour. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's uh, awesome. It's really good to meet you guys. Yeah. Okay, I'll, we'll leave it at that, and you, you guys can go off and get some sleep or whatever you do. Nice to meet you, and um, right. let's stay in touch, okay? And yeah. uh, well, let's let's go investigating some ghosts together. Okay, yeah. Mark, definitely. Thank you so much. Look forward to it. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much, yeah, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, some of those bye photos. Bye. 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 Bye.